Hello everyone, this is Amber with Staying Crafty. Today I'm going to be making a card using some stamps. The stamps that I'm using is from TPC Studio and it's called A Slice of Life. I'm using some Memento ink and rich cocoa. The reason I'm using Memento is because I'm going to be doing some coloring and I don't want my ink to bleed. Memento is great for that. So I'm using some markers from Stampin' Up and I'm starting off with the color Yo-Yo Yellow nice light yellow. Over here where I don't have any of my images I'm doing a little test. I put some of the yo-yo yellow down and I'm testing out this other color called summer sun to make little dots on the lemon to see if that'll give it some nice texture. But I decided that color was a little too orangish for me so I went back with the yo-yo yellow to see if it would show up and it did. So I went ahead and used that same color that I colored the lemons with and just went back to add some little dots for texture to make them look more like lemons. Now I'm just going in with some old olive and I'm going to color in all the stems. Very simple. I'm coloring the lemonade in the same color that I colored the lemons. Just kind of turning my paper around so that I can see what I'm doing. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I find it helpful to use a light touch when I'm using the Stampin' Up! marker so I don't get lines. I ended up coloring the lemons in the same color um, and then I went back with the summer sun to do the rinds of the lemon and the little center portions there and that gave my lemons some nice definition to break them away from the lemonade that they're floating in. I needed that variation of color. So I decided to color the border with that same summer sun for the rinds and then I'm going back with the yo-yo yellow to color the insides of the lemons real quick and easy then I decided to take some barely banana and I'm just adding kind of some little accents of color to the picture just to sort of make it a little more interesting and break up some of that stark white now I've got some frosted lace stickles I'm putting on the sugar cubes I like the frosted lace color for things like this because it's not as super sparkly as some of the other colors. So it's great for snow and for things like these sugar cubes. Now I've got some stays on ink in Timber Brown. The stays on is wonderful for stamping on plastic, which is exactly what I'm doing here. This is just an overhead transparency sheet that I purchased at my local office supply store very affordably. Um, when you are stamping on plastic, you have to be very careful that you don't smear your image. It actually took me several tries to get this right, but I'm just going to show you stamping it the first time. So you just really carefully press down and you have to try really hard to press firmly without wiggling. Now I'm going to cut out all of the things that I stamped and I'm obviously not going to show you that entire process but I thought I would share a few cutting tips with you. Um, first of all you want a really good pair of precision scissors. These Martha Stewart ones are my favorites. Um, you're going to want to turn your paper a whole bunch. You move your hand a little but you should turn your paper a lot more than you're moving your other wrist. And what I did first was I kind of went around the outer area there and then I'm going back in to get the detail work like snipping out this tiny little section. So work in sections and take your time. You don't have to get everything at once. So now I've got this great little um, finger exacto knife from Fiskars and there's just one little section I absolutely could not get into with a pair of scissors. So I'm just going back to get that. So there's one of my lemons all cut out. Obviously I did the same thing with all of them. And I'm just showing you really quickly, I decided that I wanted to stamp this glass of lemonade as well as an afterthought. So I stamped that. I also did an acetate layer. Um, the acetate layer, I omitted the lemon because I don't want my lemon to be shiny like my glass. So now I've got a piece of craft card stock that is two and three quarters by four and I'm using a Sakura gel pen to do some faux stitching. And now I'm placing all of my lemons onto this piece. I like to lay them all out first and then pick them up one at a time and glue them down. I'm using a Scotch quick dry adhesive. It has a great fine tip that's wonderful for small little sections. I'm just going to take this craft piece now and I'm going to attach it to the top of my card. For my card, I have selected to use a nice bright lemony color and it's just the standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. This is the Martha Stewart Doily Lace Punch. 
um, I knew that I wanted it to be four inches wide to match the craft cardstock above it, but I wasn't sure how tall I wanted it to be. So it's a lot taller than I need and I figured I could trim it down after punching it to see exactly what size I liked. Um, I missed a couple little spots there, so I just went in with my scissors, stimped off these tiny little pieces that were hanging on there. Now I've decided to take this piece to my trimmer and I have decided I want it to be two and a quarter inches tall. So I trim it down for that. I've got this green polka dotted paper from the Celebrations Stack by Cricut and this is one and a half inches tall and it's the same four inch length as the lace. I've just got some sheer yellow ribbon. Um, thought this was kind of fun. It's been in my stash for a long time and figured this would be the card to use it for. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie a bow and I'm using the ribbon all the way across the back and tying it instead of using the cheater method and taping the back because I know I want to be able to slide this ribbon around when I'm done to determine exactly where I want it placed. So I'm willing to have that extra ribbon along the back that even though it won't be seen, um, is still gonna be part of my card. So I just go back and trim the tails after I get my bow the way I want it, quick and easy. And now I, want to add my border of lemons to this piece and I did already slide the ribbon up so I was very glad that I was able to move it around and I just place it right there quick and simple for that and the ribbon does sort of overhang it a little bit but I think that looks all right and now I've just got to attach this piece to my card I put more adhesive on than you saw in that little clip but you get the idea <laughs> And now I'm just taking one of these little tiny glue dots. I find it helpful to pick them up with my scissors or like a poker tool, something other than my fingers. And then I just slide it underneath the knot of the bow and my bow won't move around. So now I'm taking some stickles in yellow to do the rinds and the little dots in the centers of the lemons. Um, so the front of the card is complete, but I have a lot of work to do on the inside and the back. So stick with me. Moving on to the inside of the card, um, I've got this layer here. It's the same green as the strip I used on the front, and it is four inches by five and a quarter. I've got some glossy accents, and I am going to use this for the pitcher and also for the little glass of lemonade. I'm adding the glossy accents to where the actual drink is in the pitcher and the glass. I'm avoiding all the parts that are the pure white that's supposed to be part of the empty pitcher or the empty glass. Uh, the reason for this, um, even though this adhesive is clear, it still kind of leaves that sort of watery, shiny look behind. That's kind of what it's supposed to do. And if I just leave that over the drink portion, it's actually kind of a cool effect underneath this clear plastic acetate. Um, so I just have to be really careful to line that up perfectly and I went ahead and did the same thing with the glass even though I'm not going to show it on camera. So now I've got a stamp that I would like to use and it says when life gives you lemons make lemonade and I'm inking it up in some Versamark ink because I would like to do some embossing with it. So before I emboss I always like to take my embossing buddy. This helps um, prevent like static so your embossing powder won't stick where you don't want it to. So I always like to use that. And then just go ahead and stamp down. I could not see at all if I got a clear impression <laughs> because of the pattern in the background. The Versamark was completely invisible. So I just had to hope for the best. Um, the only way to find out was to put my white embossing powder on it. And luckily it actually came out really nice and clear, but I honestly had no idea until I poured the powder. So my scratch piece of paper is perfect to just bend and put the excess powder back. So then I just go ahead and emboss my powder really simple. Now I'm going to add the picture to the top left part of my card and I decided to sort of have it down at an angle. I just thought that was sort of cute and a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to put the glass in the bottom corner facing the opposite angle. So that's what the inside of my card looks like now. I decided to add a couple layers of white so I had a place to write. And now I'm moving on to the back of my card and I'm using some old olive ink from Stampin' Up. 
and the first thing I did was stamp sweet and then have this cool little curly border type image and I'm going to go ahead and use that twice to sort of make a frame around the word sweet so I decided first to stamp the bottom and then I ink my stamp up again flip it around and stamp the top and I got this fun little word with a frame around it um, I signed my name underneath that in the matching old olive marker and here we have the finished card I'm really happy with the way it turned out I love all the details and here's one more quick glance at the inside uh, thank you so very much for watching I hope you have a wonderful and very crafty day remember there's always lots of new projects on my blog take care